You get some points, you get some points, you all get some points. Hey guys, Sebastian from Ask Sebi. Today we're going to look at some of the best intro bonuses that are available right now. We're mostly focused on the early game to mid game, but there are some other late game issuers that we will discuss in a different video because I feel like they have a lot of their own cards that have elevated offers. Big favor before we dive into all of this is to give this a thumbs up and if you are someone new here and you want to maximize those points, then consider subscribing. The layout of this is going to be a dozen cards, so four of the juicy bonuses that I think are worth considering, four business bonuses that might be worth considering, and then four of the underrated cards that you might not have heard about. If you get bored of one of them, you can feel free to use the chapters tool to skip to the next card. For the first one, we're going to start off with the City Premiere card, and this one is one that we'll go pretty quick with because I did a full dedicated video a few days ago. The old offer was 60,000 points, but right now it's up to 80,000 points for $4,000 a minimum spend in the first three months. And for someone focused on cash back, then the points can very literally be cashed out for one cent per point. So 80,000 times 0 0.01, that's $800 in value. $800 divided by $4,000 minimum spend, that's a 20% return on spend. And I probably won't go through return on spend for all of them, but I'll try to list them out just because you're always going to come out ahead. It's oftentimes going to look like 20 to maybe 50% return on spend depending on the card. For aspirational stuff, we're generally trying to get two cents per point. So 80,000 times 0 0.02, that's $1,600 in value. So this is when you transfer the points out from City to one of their partners, like Singapore Airlines, and then you either book a sweet spot redemption or business or first class. We use two cents per point because I feel like that's a reasonable number, but if you technically look at the retail price, it's generally closer to four, six, maybe 10 cents per point. $1,600 in value for $4,000 minimum spend, that's a 40% return on your spend. There is a $95 annual fee, but you can downgrade this into a no annual fee card in the second year if it's not a fit. Second card is going to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which has an intro bonus of 100,000 points for $4,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. If you want to cash out those points as a statement credit, that's going to be one cent per point. So 100,000 times 0 0.01, that's $1,000 in value. And for someone who wants to redeem those points against everyday expenses, then you can use their Pay Yourself Back program or to book travel through their portal and get 1.25 cents per point. In that case, 100,000 points is $1,250, so pretty good there. And then if you do the transfer partner thing, you're still aiming for about $0.02 cents per point, so about $2,000 in value. So depending on how you're using the points, you're looking for between 25 to 50% return on spend. There is a $95 annual fee, but if you don't like the card, if it's not a fit in the second year, then you can downgrade it to one of the freedoms, such as the Freedom Flex or the Freedom Unlimited. On that note, if you want to learn about these cards or the other cards that we're going to talk about, we do have links down below and also on our website, AskSebi.com. Number three is going to be the Chase British Airways card, and this has a 100,000 point intro bonus for $5,000 a minimum spend in the first three months. So if the 50,000 point offer sounds familiar, it's because we have seen it, but in the past, you needed to spend something like $50,000. So right now, $5,000 seems a lot more reasonable. You can generally value these points between 1.2 to 1.5 cents per point, so you're looking at about $1,200 to $1,500 in value. There is a $95 annual fee and there's not a downgrade path, but for a lot of people, this might end up being a keeper card. If you look at the brother or sister cards for the British Airways, so the Iberia and the Aer Lingus, you're going to see similar offers and effectively, they're all the same. I would argue the only differences are the base benefits of the card, so which ones you care about the most. And for most people, it probably doesn't matter too much, all of them are effectively the same for the intro bonus. And for someone who flies a particular airline a lot, then obviously get the relevant card, but otherwise they all work the same for our purpose. Next is going to be the Chase United Quest card, and this has a 100,000 point intro bonus, but it's broken down into two different levels. So tranche one is 80,000 points for $5,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. At 1.4 cents per point, that's about $1,120 in value, or about 23% return on spend. So the first level still makes a ton of sense. The second level is a bit more aggressive and it might be worth skipping depending on your spending. So tranche two is an additional 20,000 points for $10,000 in total spent. So an additional 5,000 on top. This is within the first six months though. So you do have a little bit more time. So for the second level, you're getting about $280 in value for that $5,000 in minimum spend. So about 5.6% return on spend. If you're doing a lot of intro bonuses, then maybe it doesn't make sense. But if you don't have another card that earns at that rate, then this is still pretty good. There is a 250 annual fee, but for a lot of people, this ends up being a keeper card and it's one of the more competitive ones. And if you don't like it in the second year, you can always downgrade this into a no annual fee card. This leads into the sponsor of the video, Milio. 
Milio enables businesses to pay and get paid online quickly and for free. If you're using your bank account or if you're using a debit card, it's going to be 0% fees, so nothing at all. If you use a credit card, there is a 2.9% fee, but it might make sense if you are trying to hit minimum spends. It's really good for those situations where you can't otherwise use a credit card, so you do this, and then Melio ends up either sending a bank transfer or a check. This is specifically for businesses though, not personal. I know there are some other options out there that work for both, but this is only business. I've been using Milio for about two years now, so I actually do like the product. And one easy use case is if you have a vendor that doesn't take credit cards. If you have enough organic spend, then this might be a skip. But if this helps you hit the minimum spends that would otherwise be impossible, then that's a good thing because I'd happily pay 2.9% in fees in order to get 20% return on spend. That's pretty much just making money. If you're someone who has very high business spend, then this can help you generate statuses. So for example, Bonvoy Platinum is pretty easy if you have 75K. If you have Hyatt, then you can earn your way up to Globalist. And then for Delta, you could easily get Platinum or maybe even Diamond, depending on the level of spend you have. Ironically, this is why I recommend the Hyatt card for a lot of people who might be in that position to start a business who likely will have that spending. I like that transactions are pretty easy to set up and the UI UX is very modern. Probably one of the easiest ways to earn points or status, especially since the fees for using Milio are tax deductible for your business. So you're basically earning points that aren't taxed and you're also deducting the fees to earn those points. Try this out yourself by signing up, adding a bill and scheduling your first payment using the link down below to support the channel. Let's actually look at four business cards that I think are strongly worth considering. The first one is going to be the Chase United business. We have a historic high offer of 150,000 points and it's broken down into two different levels. The first tranche is 75,000 points after $5,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. 1.4 cents per point, that's about $1,050 in value, about 21% return on spend. The second tranche is a bit more aggressive, so the next 75,000 points are after $20,000 in total spend. So basically $15,000 in additional spend, but it is within the first six months. So you can think of it as an additional $1,050 in value, but for an additional $15,000 in spend, so a bit more aggressive. $99 annual fee that is not waived in the first year, and there is not a downgrade path into a no annual fee card because there's no, no annual fee United business cards on Chase's side, so there's not really much you can do there. Basically a keeper cancel, but for a lot of people might also be a keeper, especially if you can deduct the annual fee. Number two is going to be the Chase Inc. Preferred, which has 100,000 points as an intro bonus, but it's after $15,000 of minimum spend and only within the first three months. Might make sense for some business owners who have that level of spend, but probably harder to justify as a sole prop. Minimum value is $1,000, upwards of maybe $2,000 if you want to do transfer partners. So if you don't have any other options and you really want to maximize your ultimate reward points, then I think it's a no-brainer. But obviously, if you're someone in the early game, you might have some other choices that have a lower minimum spend. $95 annual fee, but there's a downgrade path into the Chase Inc. Cash or Inc. Unlimited in the second year. Number three is kind of a weird one, which is not going to be for everyone, but I think it has a lot of features that might make sense for some small businesses and especially startups. This is going to be the ramp card, which offers you $250 for spending your first thousand dollars. It is only for corporations and LLCs though, so not for so props or LLPs. It's probably one of the most competitive startup cards out there though, because it has a lot of features that would otherwise cost you money, especially if you have a big team. So for example, they have very good expense management software that could otherwise cost you $20 per person per team member, and that adds up pretty quickly. The main disadvantage is that you do need to have $250,000 in your business bank account in order to qualify for the account. So pretty much small businesses and also startups that have raised a little bit of money. Link down below if you wanna check that out and support the channel. Number four is going to be one that I think it's underrated because it gets you status, especially if you're someone who likes to go to Vegas. So this is going to be the Barclays Wyndham Earner business card. You're going to get 90,000 Wyndham points, which is technically a historic high, so very good over there. And the minimum spend is pretty reasonable. It's two different tranches, which sounds really bad already because the other ones were very aggressive. But here you're going to get 60,000 points after $1,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. Wyndham points are about one cent per point, so that's $600 in value for $1,000, 60% return on spend. You get an additional 30,000 points for $2,000 in total spend within the first six months, so an additional $1,000 in spend, so pretty good there, pretty reasonable. I feel like of all the business cards, it's the least annoying of the bunch. There is a $95 annual fee, but you also get 15,000 points every year as an anniversary bonus, so I would argue it's a keeper card, 
you're getting about $150 in value for $90 every year. With this business card, unlike the personal Wyndham cards, you get diamond status. As of filming this right now, Wyndham is not letting you match from other hotel groups to their program. So even if you have Bonvoy, even if you have Hilton Diamond, they're not letting you match over to the Wyndham status. The one exception to this is Caesars, where they do have a partnership where they match directly. This means that if you have Wyndham Diamond, you can match over to Caesars Diamond, and then in the future, when that expires, you can match back. So this is the status matching carousel. Ironically, that's why I have Wyndham Diamond and also Caesars Diamond right now, because I'm on the carousel. If you like to go to Vegas, especially if you can find cheap rates, one thing I really like is that you don't need to pay resort fees when you have diamond status of Caesars. Obviously, only for Caesars properties, so anything under their umbrella. This could easily be $30 to $40 per day, and if you go during the weekday, if you're working from home, then it could add up quite a bit because you can find rates for $30 to $40 a night anyways, so it's effectively half off depending on how you look at it. I feel like I'm selling this pretty hard, but I don't even have a link for this. I think it's just a good offer. And as someone who likes Vegas, I think it's a no-brainer. In the past, if you could match over with your other programs, and that's great. But right now, given the current meta, it's actually in a very unique position. So with that said, let's look into four underrated cards. And we actually go back to Wyndham. So this is going to be the Wyndham Earner Plus card, which is a personal card. Same exact intro bonus, so 60,000 points for Tier 1, and then an additional 30,000 points for Tier 2. Annual fee is a little bit lower at $75, but you do not get Wyndham Diamond status, you get Wyndham Platinum status. This means that when you match it over to Caesars, it's also not Diamond, it's also going to be Platinum. This means that you still have to pay resort fees, and you also don't get the free $100 dining credit. If you have two players, then the dining credit can come in pretty clutch. You still do get complimentary valet and self-parking at some properties, so that's a pretty good thing. Number two is the Barclays Emirates Silver card. So here you're going to get 50,000 points after $3,000 of minimum spend in the first three months. At 1.2 cents per point, that's about $600 in value, so about 20% return on spend. There is a $99 annual fee, but I think this might still make sense if you're someone in the mid game and you want to get some Emirates points without having to transfer it over from something like City. So by not burning your points, you might be saving money as well. There's also a gold version of this card, but I don't really think it's worth it. I think the silver one is the best fit for points given the annual fees, but it might not make sense in the second year unless you don't have priority pass. Basically, give it a try, see if you like it, and if not, you can cancel it in year two. Number three is the Bank of America Air France KLM card. So here you get 50,000 points and also 150 as a statement credit for $2,000 of minimum spend in the first 90 days. At 1.2 cents per point, that's $600 in value, plus the 150, that's 750 in value for $2,000 of minimum spend, which is about 40% return on spend. There is an $89 annual fee, but it's mitigated by the anniversary points that you get every year for keeping the card. If you're someone who doesn't want to spend or chase or city points on travel because you want to invest them, then these cards make a lot of sense because eventually you run out of those cash back and those convertible currencies. Technically, you have to travel with these points anyways, and it's a pretty easy way to keep player two happy. Number four, the last one on the list, is going to be the US Bank Altitude Connect. So it is one that we've talked about a lot in the past, but I think it's worth mentioning, given that it has a pretty good bonus, and for some people, it could be a long-term earner card. You're going to get 50,000 points after $3,000 of minimum spend in the first 120 days. Points are worth one cents per point, so that's $500 in value. There is a $95 annual fee, but it's actually going to be waived in the first year, and you have a few other credits, which might make sense for you to keep the card long term. So things like Global Entry or TSA PreCheck, and also they have a streaming credit if you want to put your streaming stuff onto that card. Outside of this, I think it's an earner card, so it's one of those cards where if you spend enough money on it, it might make sense depending on your circumstances. If you're someone who doesn't want to go with the big three, then this might be worth considering. So I don't have links for the last five cards, but if you want to learn about the other ones and you want to support the channel, we do have links down below and also on our website, AskSebi.com. Milio and also Ramp link will be down below as well if you want to check them out. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on these cards and which one would you consider getting? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. And also if you're gardening, then what are you gardening for? If you like to give it a thumbs up, if you know anyone else who might benefit, then share this with them, It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.